join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. On behalf of the 8th grade class and the staff at Belleville Middle School, we would like to welcome the three veterans with us today who will be honored with the Cult of Valor. We also welcome all family members, teachers, school board members, and the staff at Patches and Petals for their amazing dedication to this experience. We would now like to give you a summary of what we have done to honor these veterans with us today. From November to January, Belleville Middle School 8th grade class has been traveling back and forth to quite a different place in the classroom. This activity has had us on pins and needles while we learned valuable life skills of communication, safety, the sacrifices that our veterans make, and of course, sewing from the lovely ladies at Patches and Petals. We went down to our local quilt shop, Patches and Petals, and became sewers, bloggers, photographers, and leaders. Throughout the Quilts of Valor activity, we have learned many valuable lessons on a variety of topics. Bloggers explain the daily process of making the quilt. The photographers were able to observe and document the entirety of the quilting process. From the sewing expertise to the unique choices of fabrics representing each veteran's military and family experiences, everything flowed together into a beautiful final project. The ironing, while underappreciated, was absolutely necessary and helped the final product look as good as it does today. In addition to experiencing the quilting process, we were able to learn and further develop lifelong skills as well. Everyone basically already knew teamwork and cooperation, but this project made those skills leap into action. Communication was a key factor in making sure all the blocks were done properly so they would fit together. If a strip was cut the wrong length, everything, the whole block would, would, wouldn't be the right size. So everyone had to cooperate and verify that that everything was properly measured out and cut. While everyone worked on their blocks, we worked in groups of two. One person would do most of the sewing and the other would not, and the other would iron the block and see. This would help us develop our teamwork skills. We, we would then rotate responsibilities to learn other skills of the project. Everyone had to turn to sew, blog, lead, and of course, iron. These teamwork skills were also used in the research process in order for us to gain as much valuable information as possible at our time at the Belleville Public Library. We learned about the military experiences our three veterans were in, Persian Gulf War, Desert Storm, Afghanistan, and the Vietnam War, with the help of the Belleville Public Library. Through this research, we were able to learn more about the soldiers, their jobs, and their life at home. We put that knowledge and the thanks we have into this quilt of valor, the highest award a civilian can grant a soldier. We would like to welcome Vicki Sayso to comment on the meeting behind the valor program. Good morning. Thanks for being here so early this morning to honor some hometown Wisconsin veterans heroes. My name is Vicki Sasso and I live in New Laris. I have been involved with Quilts of Valor for almost four years. First by myself, and then I started a quilting group here in Belleville, attached to Patches and Petals Quilt Shop about two and a half years ago. Our group, called Sugar River Quilts of Valor, has sewn over 330 quilts for our nation's veterans since that time. Last November, I was asked to come and speak to the Belleville Middle School 8th grade students about Quilts of Valor as they pursue their desire to honor some specific veterans, thereby performing community service and thanking these veterans. It was my honor to do so. My goal at that time was to inspire and inform the 8th grade students 
about the Quilts of Valor Foundation organization. How did Quilts of Valor start? The power of a mother. Let me tell you a story. It actually started with a dream. Yes, a dream by a mother. Each of us has a mother, and we could all agree that mothers worry. Isn't that part of a mother's job? I think it's in our DNA. Let me tell you the story about this particular mother. In 2003, Catherine Roberts, a quilter, a Blue Star mother, son was deployed to Iraq. A Blue Star mother means that her child is on active duty in the military. Well, Catherine's son sat atop a Humvee as a gunner. Didn't we all agree that mothers worry? Well, this mother was 10 seconds from panic every day, not knowing about her son, how he was doing, if he was safe or if he was injured. One night, she had a dream, and she saw a young man sitting on the side of his bed in the middle of the night, hunched over. The feeling of this soldier was one of utter despair. She could see his war demons clustered all around him, dragging him down, making him feel hopeless. And he was so far away from home. Then, as if viewing a movie, she saw him in the next scene, wrapped in a quilt. His whole demeanor had changed from the one of despair to one of hope and well-being. The quilt had made this dramatic change. The message of her dream was, quilts equal healing. From this dream, by a mother, the Quilts of Valor Foundation was formed. The mission of the Quilts of Valor Foundation is to cover service members and veterans touched by <coughs> war with comforting and healing Quilts of Valor. The very first Quilt of Valor was awarded in November 2003 at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, which is outside Washington, D.C., to a young soldier from Minnesota who had lost his leg in Iraq. From Catherine's dream, the Quilts of Valor movement spread <laughs> across the nation and beyond with the power of word of mouth and the internet. A grassroots organization was formed. Today, the Quilts of Valor Foundation is a nonprofit organization consisting of more than 10,000 volunteer quilters in the United States, Canada, and Australia. These quilters volunteer our time, our sewing skills, and open our purses to buy the quilt's fabric. Our quilters put their sewing machines into service in a way as to say thank you to our nation's veterans. Each quilt takes about three months to complete. Our National Foundation has awarded quilts of valor here in the United States, Germany, Iraq, and Afghanistan. The Quilts of Valor Foundation, as of today, has awarded over 153,000 Quilts of Valor. This morning, three more veterans will be honored. Our foundation has partnered with the Department of Defense to help recognize Vietnam-era veterans. One of the veterans today is a Vietnam veteran. He will also be receiving the 50th anniversary Vietnam commemorative Thank you, lapel pin. The Belleville Middle School 8th grade students will now present and award the Quilts of Valor. We are here today to honor 
Master Sergeant Kevin Long, also known as my dad. My dad was in the Air Force for 25 years, serving our country, keeping us safe, and overall being a great man. My dad was born in Fitchburg, Wisconsin on September 9, 1965, and went to school at Madison West. He grew up with two older sisters, Linda and Kelly, and one older brother, Jim. His mother's name was Ann, and his father's name was Glenn, and now he has a family of his own. My mom, or his wife, Sri Sean Long, and his kids, Angie Phil Long, Eric Phil Long, and Tyler Long. Mr. Long enjoys watching sports. Some of his favorite teams are the Wisconsin Badgers, the Green Bay Packers, and the Chicago Blackhawks. Watching sports is only one of Mr. Long's favorite things to do. He also enjoys fishing, baking, and gardening. Some of his favorites also include the color blue, dogs, bus driving, and the 1965 Ford Mustang. My dad has traveled to so many countries in the world, seen so many things. Some of his favorite travels are in Thailand, where he met my mom, Okinawa, Japan, where I was born, and England, where my brother was born and he retired. Operation Desert Storm began on August 1990 where it was fought in both Kuwait and Iraq. Kuwait, being an oil-rich country, was invaded just for that. Saddam Hussein, on his place, watched the pipe oil to rebuild the state, which destroyed and exhausted the country of Iraq. Additionally, Hussein used the attack to try and get rid of the massive debt he owed to Kuwait and the help of the difficult with Iran. He also believed Kuwait was a necessary part to remove the country of Iraq. Overall, the main contributing countries involved in the desert storm were Iraq, Kuwait, the United States, and Saudi Arabia. August 1990, Iraqi troops were ordered by Saddam Hussein to invade their neighbors on the Persian Gulf, Kuwait. With authority from the United Nations, the U.S. formed a coalition to try and force the troops of Iraq out of Kuwait. They set up base with their newly found allies in Saudi Arabia. The U.S. troops were threatened by missiles. We began to fear that chemicals would be put into use. This was known as Operation Desert Shield. January 1991. U.S. coalition troops attacked Iraqis in Kuwait. After two weeks of fighting, the troops had come out victorious. This was known as Operation Desert Storm. The collapse of the communism in the Soviet Union in Eastern Europe in the late 1980s and early 1990s released a tide of nationalism in Yugoslavia, a federation of Roman Catholics in Slavia, and Slavians and Croats. This left many people with no food and supplies. April 1992, the United States recognized the independence of Bosnia and began airlifting supplies to Sarajevo. My dad was stationed on a base in Tucson, Arizona to fix planes so they could fly back and deliver supplies. Operation Northern Watch was originally called Operation Provide Comfort because the United Nations Security Council would give necessary supplies such as food, water, shelter, and medicine to current citizens. This was launched on April 3rd, 1991. The U.S. threatened that if Iraqi forces attacked the Kurds, there would be a no-fly zone put in place. An attack happened, and so the U.S. troops were needed to stay in Iraq to ensure the no-fly zone was kept. Hence, the name was changed to Operation Northern Watch. Operation Enduring Freedom began on October 7, 2001, shortly after September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. This all took place in George W. Bush announced that British forces had begun airstrikes on Taliban and Al-Qaeda targets in Afghanistan. In late October and early November, Britain, Turkey, Australia, and Canada all agreed to send forces to Afghanistan along with the German Chancellor, Italy, and the Netherlands. By January of 2002, more than 30,000 active troops were in Turkey. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, Kevin got to guide and work on planes that flew food and supplies to the soil. The Iraqi climate was very extreme. It would transition from hot to cold very quickly, making it hard to work. Working here could also get very complicated because sand would get stuck in the crevices of machinery, causing them to break them. That means soldiers need to work even harder to keep them clean and working properly. Davis Monthan is an Air Force base in Arizona where Kevin Long was stationed. Their mission is to maintain aircraft, to develop and train people to become leaders, and to create win-win. Wingmen are people who are positioned behind and outside the leading aircraft in a formation. 
They are also piloted to support one another in a potentially dangerous flying environment. While serving our country, Mr. Wong has many achievements to be proud of, one of which being an E-7 Master Sergeant. Mr. Wong was an E-7 Master Sergeant who served in the Air Force for 25 years. An E-7 Master Sergeant has more advanced leadership, more responsibilities, and a higher rank. The position of an E-7 Master Sergeant includes 17 consecutive years of work, and the promotion, the promotion process for an E-7 Master Sergeant is almost identical to the process of promotion for a staff in some way. When Mr. Long was going into the war, he had no plan on what he wanted to do. After arriving at his base, he had the opportunity to be an aircraft engine mechanic. This job included performing the pre-flight, through-flight, and post-flight maintenance inspections. Another job was applying the technical knowledge of the airframes and power plant systems, determining what malfunctions have occurred in certain equipment. This was a very important job so that they could transport goods to and from bases, keeping our veterans alive and safe. The C-130 was Mr. Long's favorite aircraft for a C-130 is an aircraft used to transport troops and equipment to military bases or combat zones. The C-130 has a range of 2,000 miles and usually consists of three to five crew members, two pilots, a loadmaster, a flight engineer, and a navigator. Mr. Long was rewarded 36 medals and ribbons, five of which being the Air Force Training Ribbon, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, the Global War and Terrorism Service Medal, the Air Force Outstanding Unit, and the Air Force Good Conduct Medal. After many years serving us, my dad has changed so many lives and has shown his sympathy to his country. I appreciate my dad and all that he has done for me. He is a man of love, care, and gratitude for all things around him. I love my dad and I'm very proud and thankful of love and care for his family and friends. Thank you. <laughs> Josh R. Harris was born on May 5, 1981 in Baraboo, Wisconsin. As a child, he was interested in learning and sports. By high school, he was a top student and participated in cross-country and track. He later went to the University of Wisconsin, getting a degree in political science and economics. Josh now has three daughters and a wife. Some of his favorite things include his family, learning, and running. He works at Miosoft doing computer programs. Torn 
by terror, whether from the Al-Qaeda group of political uprisers turned terrorists or the civil war happening between democratic leaders and communist leaders, Afghanistan had gone from a second world country exporting hides, pelts, rugs, and clothes to a country riddled with IEDs and gunfire. Blamed for hiding terrorists, tensions had been high for a long time until finally civil war broke out and the United States took sides with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to help civilians and democracy. Eligible service members have to have been assigned to a unit participating in or serving in direct support of specified global war and terrorism operations. Uh, joint Service Commendation Medal. To earn this medal, you can do a praiseworthy service or achievement while assigned to a joint activity. National Defense Service Medal. 120 consecutive days of service or participating in any honorable active duty service. Afghanistan campaign medal. To earn this medal, you have to do active service in direct support of Operation Enduring Freedom for the Liberation of Afghanistan. German Armed Forces Efficiency Badge Gold. This decoration is given to every German soldier, but can also be awarded to Germany's allies. Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M device. This medal is awarded for 10 years of honorable service in any reserve component of the United States Armed Forces Reserve. Josh is ready because it's by Army Sunday. Josh also received the Army Service Ribbon. This ribbon is given to any Army Service member that has completed the initial SG training. He is also awarded the Overseas Service Ribbon, which is given for completing an overseas Josh returned home to his family January 2007. He was greeted by his parents, wife, and daughter. Josh enjoyed meeting and spending time with people in Afghanistan. He also liked to venture out and explore the country's beauty. To honor my father's service, we are presenting him with this quilt created by our eighth grade students. be honoring my grandfather, Bliss Nicholson. Not only is he a four-year Navy War veteran, he is an incredible grandfather that has always inspired me to be a better person. Mr. Nicholson, son, grandparent, father, friend, hero. We consider every soldier a hero. They fight for us and protect us with their lives. We have had the privilege to hear some of Bliss's stories as well as been able to learn more about him. In these past few weeks, 
We have been humbled and are extremely grateful for everything that he has done for our country. Vietnam is a tropical country. In the summer, the temperature grows hot and humid and the air feels damp. In the winter, it can grow very cold in the mountainous regions. Vietnam has different types of landscapes, including thick jungles, high mountains, swamps, many rivers, rice growing fields, beaches on the coast, and big cities. There are also time periods of heavy rain called monsoon seasons, where at time the water can get up to the soldier's waist. Vietnam is located in southern Asia. Our troops were stationed in South Vietnam. It was our job to keep the North Vietnamese from invading the South. America began sending small numbers of military advisors to the war in the 1950s. But by 1968, there were more than 500,000 soldiers in South Vietnam. The very last of Americans did not leave the country until 1975, at which point 58,286 troops were dead. Conflicts that started the war lead back to more than 100 years ago when France wanted to bring Vietnam into their empire. France won that battle, but the Vietnamese people wanted their country back. Later on, President John F. Kennedy feared communism. He believed Vietnam was the perfect place to show America's power. So in 1961, he told a news reporter that we would be going to war in Vietnam so that America could show people that we had the power to stop communism. He began sending money, equipment, and military advisors to South Vietnam to help fight the enemy. <coughs> a lot of people were prone to the idea of war in Vietnam. Because of this, the draft, the draft became vital. The draft, or otherwise referred to as a lottery drawing, had been around since 1942. It was abolished two years before Americans left Vietnam in 1975. Specifically for Vietnam drafting, it was held at Selective Service National Headquarters in Washington, D.C. The event determined the order of call for induction. Reinstitution of the lottery was a change from the draft the oldest man first method that had been previously used. How it worked was there were 366 blue plastic capsules containing birth dates placed in, large glass, in a large glass container and drawn by hand to assign order of call numbers to all men within the 18 to 26 age range specified in selective service law. With radio, film, and TV coverage, the capsules were drawn from the container, opened, and the dates inside were posted in order. For example, if the capsule drawn contained the date September 14th, all men born on September 14th in any year between 1944 and 1950 were assigned the lottery number one. The drawing continued until all days of the year had been prepared with sequence numbers. Men who were farmers, however, were allowed to stay and tend to the farm and family. A lot of men tried to dodge a draft by moving to Canada, Virginia on the intelligence test they were given. Instead of waiting to be drafted, Mr. Nicholson volunteered fresh out of high school and started his training so he could serve his country. Bliss had two main jobs in the Navy. One of his jobs was a firefighter. They would go out on the flight deck if a plane had crashed and try to stop the fire and save the pilot. Bliss was also in flight operations. They were in charge of cutting, catching and shooting planes off of the flight deck of the carrier. They would do this during the daytime and at night. Nicknamed Battle Cat and the Kitty, the Kitty Hawk was killed late December 27, 1957, but launched in 1960. Commissioned in April 29, 1961, it had four propellers, five blades on each, four aircraft elevators, four catapults, before approximately 85 planes and could go 30 plus knots. The USS Kitty Hawk deserves to be the lead supercarrier. The USS John F. Kennedy, JFK for short. The last of the Kitty Hawk class of ships to be built is nicknamed Big John, the Can Opener, and Slack Jack. This ship is currently retired and is a museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This vessel was named officially after the 35th President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who was decommissioned in 2007. Nicknamed the Big E, the Grey Ghost, and Prison. 
The enterprise has two nuclear reactors for each of the four propeller shafts. This was the first time two nuclear reactors were harnessed together. Built with 60,923 tons of steel, 1,507 tons of aluminum, 203 miles of pipe and tubing, 1,700 tons of one quarter inch gravity mass, the engineers had a lot of work out for them. If you were to line up the millions of blueprints end to end, they were stretched 2,400 miles, both from Miami, Florida, to Los Angeles, California. Not only was Mr. Nicholson noticed for his bravery, but he was awarded for it. The following are all awards, medals, and badges that he rightfully received. One of the more personal awards that Mr. Nicholson earned was Sailor of the Year for the 7th Fleet. The 7th Fleet is a military formation, and Mr. Nicholson was awarded this for his honorable, honorable work on the boats. After you won this award, you advanced to Chief Petty Officer, just as Mr. Nicholson did. He was also awarded the National Defense Service Medal. This was given to Mr. Nicholson for his honorable service. This award was established to recognize the sacrifice of soldiers who put their lives on the line during a time of national emergency. And in front of this bronze medal, there is an eagle which represents the United States, a sword that expresses strength, and palm leaves that stand for victory. On the back, there is a shield that also represents the United States, a laurel that embodies honor, and an oak branch which stands as courage. Another medal that Mr. Nicholson earned was the National, was the Navy Commendation Medal that was bestowed to soldiers for their outstanding achievements. On one side of the medal, there is an eagle. The eagle is the seal of the Department of Defense. In the middle of the eagle's body, there is a shield, which is also the great seal of the United States. Also, the recipient's name is engraved on the back. Last but certainly not least, Mr. Nicholson earned the Vietnam Service Medal. This award was presented to anyone who served in Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and Thailand during the time of 1965 through 1973. On one side of the medal, there is a dragon covered in bamboo, which stands for the Vietnam flag and the Hong Kong. On the other side, there is Crosby, which is an ancient weapon of the Vietnamese people. The Statue of Liberty is also on the side. The torch embodies the United States' devotion to the freedom and liberty. These days, my grandpa divides his time owning slash working at the Bruce Company and spending time with his family. He enjoys watching football with his grandchildren and talking to them about their days at school. He also loves training his new dog and traveling. His favorite place that he has traveled is the Rocky Mountains. Overall, my grandpa has many things going on in his life, but he never lets that slow him down. So thank you for everything that you have done for our country, your family, work members, and community.
This quote to them is meant to offer you comfort and to remind you that although your family and friends were not with you at all times, you were forever in all of our thoughts and in all of our hearts. Our founder describes the quote of valor as a civilian equivalent of a Purple Heart Award. Our quotes are awarded, not just handed out, but must be awarded in a ceremony directly with the veteran. Our quilts are a lifetime award. It has often been said that the highest award a civilian can bestow on a veteran is a quilt of valor. Our quilts of valor have three significant parts. The top layer with its many colors, shapes, and fabrics represents the communities and the many individuals of our nation. Each stitch in the quilt represents the love, the gratitude, and sometimes even the tears of the maker. The batting is the center of the quilt. It is warmth. It represents the hope that this quilt will bring you warmth, comfort, peace, and healing. The backing is the strength of the quilt. It holds the many pieces of the quilt together. It represents the strength of the quilt of valor recipients, strength of their families, strength of our communities, and lastly, the strength of our great nation. Once the energy of the quilt was created, it cannot be destroyed. Our quilt is an instrument of love. Seven. Just as you are unique, each quilt is unique. There is no other quilt of valor like yours. Your quilt of valor comes from the hearts of the Belleville's Middle School 8th grade students. From the first ever chosen and cut to the final stitch sewn, these students always knew this quilt was made, being made to honor you, a veteran. The students inscribe your name on this quilt so future generations will know what you have done for your country. Veterans, as of today, the story of this quilt becomes your story. We hope that you will use this quilt as a tangible reminder of the love with which it was sewn for you. Thousands of women and men and students across this land are forever in your debt. It is our privilege to honor you with the Quilt of Valor. And so, veterans, on behalf of the Quilt of Valor Foundation, the Belleville Middle School 8th grade students, and a grateful nation with our deepest appreciation, we thank you for your service to our country with this Quilt of Valor Award. Thank you, and most importantly, we want to say to you, veterans, welcome home. You are our hero. like to thank the following who have given their time and effort in making the quilts of valor. To Patches and Petal staff for donating their time, space, and materials. The Public Library for facilitating the research of the soldiers. Quilts of Valor Foundation for guiding us through the process. And Linda and the Quilt Grove Company for quilting the completed quilts. We will now end with the 8th grade choir singing America the Beautiful, directed by Sarah
feel free to sing along. Thank you. <laughs> 